Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday the 23rd of March. And this morning for our reading, we're going to do the whole of John chapter 12. It's a longer reading this morning, um, but please let's just hear God's word. Let me read it. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honour. Martha served, and Lazarus was amongst those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from um, essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, That perfume was worth a year's wage. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief, and since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Jesus replied, Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him, and also to see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priests decided to kill Lazarus too. For it was because of him that many people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. The next day, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. And they shouted, praise God, blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming riding on a colt, donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was to fulfill the prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realised that, that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, There's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it and they went together to ask Jesus. Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care for nothing in the... Those who care for their life, those who have care nothing for their life in this world, will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me, because my servants must be where I am, and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice from heaven saying, I have already brought glory to my name and I will do so again. When the crowd heard the voice, some thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel had spoken to him. Jesus told them, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time for judging this world has come, when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. The crowd responded, We understand from Scripture that the Messiah would live forever. How can you say the Son of Man will die? Just who is the Son of Man anyway? Jesus replied, My light will shine for you a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. 
But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? But the people couldn't believe. For as Isaiah also said, The Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, so that their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Isaiah was referring to Jesus when he spoke this because he saw the future and spoke of the Messiah's glory. Many people did did believe in him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders. But they wouldn't admit to it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than the praise of God. Jesus shouted to the crowd, If you trust me, you're trusting not only in me, but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you're seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me. I will not judge those who hear me but don't obey me, for I have come to save the world and not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. Amen. That's a, a chapter packed full of so many things. Um, right from Jesus having his feet anointed by Mary um, with that jar of expensive perfume and we could speak about how it had to be broken for for it to pour out for it to actually do its job a bit like Christ like Jesus he had to be broken on the cross but let me bring a connection to the previous chapter um, from yesterday we, we talked about how the Pharisees were so concerned about their temple and their position with the Romans and afraid that Jesus would cause an upset of that and they would lose their position. Whereas Jesus, as he entered Jerusalem triumphant, didn't care about pomp and ceremony and the tradition. He enters humbly. It says on a, on a donkey, in fact, on a donkey's coat. He didn't have a fancy horse. He didn't have a fancy carriage. He rode a donkey's coat. Yes, it fulfilled prophecy um, from Zechariah 9, verse 9, which says, Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Jesus was always humble because he realised it was never about him, but it was about his father's will, about doing what God had called him to do. For us in our service, it's about being humble as well, Realising that we serve God, not ourselves. That we are called by God, not our own desire. To serve him, to bring honour to him. So others may see the light, may see Jesus, and may turn to him. So in everything, let us think about why we do things. What is our motivation? Do we do it because we want praise from people? Or do we do it because we want to please God and we want God to be honoured and glorified? That should be our driving force. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again as we journey towards Palm Sunday and then Good Friday, thinking about what Jesus has done for us. We are reminded about how humble Jesus is, as everything that he does is about fulfilling your will about showing people the way to salvation, showing them your love. Lord, may we be motivated by doing things for you and not for ourselves, so that we bring glory and honour unto you. Go with us now, Father, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks everyone for listening in this morning. 
We'll be back again tomorrow morning, same time, same place. See you then. Take care. God bless.